Hi, my name is Simone Nicole, and today on How To Heroes, I'm going to show you how to make a Portuguese cataplana. Um, a Portuguese cataplana is named a cataplana because of the cooking vessel which it is made in. Um, it's important to note before we even start this recipe that you do not need a cataplana to make this recipe. Um, you can use a pot with a lid, or you could even use a wok um, covered in tin foil. Here we have a cataplana, and as you can see, it's basically two hammered copper bowls attached to one another by a hinge um, and two locks. To use your cataplana, you simply unlock it, you open it, you add your seafood, um, variety of sauces. It's very versatile. You can um, use white wines or red wines. Uh, today we'll be using sausage and tomatoes. Um, then you just lock it shut, put it on the stove top, and it takes about 15 minutes um, total. It's a very convenient way of cooking a large amount of seafood. Um, and cataplanas were developed, they're from Portugal, um, and fishermen would bring cataplanas with them on their boats in the morning. They would catch their daily catch, throw a bunch of it in, steam over high heat for 15 minutes, and then enjoy. Let's get started. Uh, the first step in making a cataplana is going to be your sauces that you uh, cook your seafood with. Today I'm going to be making two sauces. Um, the first one is a Lisbon sauce. And it's a really simple sauce. Um, here are all the ingredients. Basically, uh, just take one large red pepper, roast it uh, directly on your stovetop, and once you have all of the skin evenly charred and black all over the entire pepper, remove from the heat and then just wrap in tin foil or a uh, Ziploc bag and let it cool. Then afterwards remove the skin and the seeds from inside. And that is the base of our Lisbon sauce. Lisbon sauce is um, delicious and it keeps really well. It's great with barbecues and it'll stay uh, in your fridge for a week to two weeks. So it's convenient to have around the house. So for one pepper, I add four cloves of garlic, probably a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna start with about a half cup of olive oil. We'll add more if it's necessary. Start low, and then you want to bring your blender up to top speed. You don't want to start on high. <laughs> okay, and there we have it. That's your Lisbon sauce, really simple. And you'll see it's a beautiful color. It's a f very fresh tasting sauce. Okay, so the next step in putting our cataplana together is to make um, our base sauce, or stock soup, um, that we'll add to the stew later. And what I've done here is, in just a few tablespoons of oil, I've um, lightly caramelized some chorizo. And you should note that uh, for half of the chorizo, I minced it. And then the other half, I sliced it a little thick. Um, just the variety in textures after it's stewed um, is better that way. So you want to reserve the oil, and you don't want to deglaze uh, this pan yet. You want to just keep all the brown bits in the bottom. I add about a quarter cup of olive oil to this. This is four rough chopped uh, tomatoes. A little bit of salt. This is sea salt. And you want to keep this on high heat. And you really want to cook these tomatoes until they're barely recognizable. You're basically making a sauce out of the tomatoes. All right, so after about uh, Three minutes or so, our tomatoes have um, 
cooked. They're barely firm anymore. They're pretty soft. It's perfect. Next, we want to add our onions. And after adding the onions, you want to add another quarter cup of olive oil. And just a pinch more salt. And then you want to cook these onions for another two to three minutes. All right, so after about two or three minutes of cooking, the onions are slightly translucent. They're still um, a little firm and have a little body, which is exactly when we want to add the rest of our ingredients. Um, we're going to add the chorizo. And this is two sausages, actually. And then two bay leaves. These are fresh, but dry is fine. Pinch of parsley. Uh, two cloves of garlic. Just chopped, not minced. And then maybe a half teaspoon of just dried red pepper flakes. Give this a stir. And now that we have everything incorporated together well, we're going to add some bottled clam juice. One bottle. Two bottles. Uh, we'll say, yeah, two bottles. There we go. And at this point, you want to uh, let the pan sit on high heat and you want to reduce the liquid in this pan by half. And that is the sauce. Okay, and now after about seven or eight minutes on high heat, you can see that we've reduced most of the liquid out of the sauce, and this is it. You don't want it to be too dry. You want a little bit of liquid in it, but um, you do want it very chunky because as the shellfish steam, they'll open and they'll release their own natural juices um, back into the broth. So you want this to be thick and concentrated in flavor. The uh, additional liquid will come from the other products that you add later on. All right, well now we are ready to combine all of our ingredients and um, do the final cooking process of our cataplana. Um, we start by putting it on a hot stove. This has already been heated. And it's copper on the outside, which radiates heat really well, um, but aluminum on the inside. And we'll put just maybe two tablespoons of oil. And three cloves of garlic. And a pinch or two of red pepper flakes. And we just want this to saute lightly and get a little bit of the flavor of the garlic into the pan and the oil. Okay, and now we've just got a little bit of caramelization going on the garlic. You can smell it. Um, and you really just want to flavor the oil. Now we are going to add our shellfish. The mussels and the clams go in first. Here are, um, this is about two pounds of squid tube. And this is conch, although if you don't have conch available, you can use um, scallops instead. I would use a half pound and slice them in halves. You want to add all of these. This is an onion. It's cut into quarters and then thinly sliced. Looks like I'm going to use about half of, half of an onion. Now we're going to add our Lisbon sauce. And 
and a half of cup of white wine. And then we're going to add our base. Now that we've gotten all the ingredients incorporated, we're going to add a little bit of salt right over the top, just two healthy pinches. Because the katsaplan is copper, uh, it can get really hot, so you want to be sure that when you're stirring this, you have a dish towel to protect your hand. And then you just incorporate everything all together. Now we're going to top it with just maybe a quarter cup of um, just store-bought tomato sauce. Simple. And finally, we're going to put just a few fillets of fish. A large flaky white fish is really great on this. I wouldn't recommend a salmon. It kind of overpowers the rest of the flavors. Um, but something like a sea bass is great. And then just top with some chopped parsley. And then we close our katsaplana and make sure to lock the sides. And then this will cook on high heat for 10 minutes. Okay, now that about 10 minutes have elapsed, we are ready to add our shrimp and a few lemon wedges. Cooking is just about done for the katsaplana. And the real trick to this is just arranging them beautifully so that when your guests open your katsaplana, they're greeted by a nice arrangement of shellfish and color. And a few lemon wedges. And then you just want to return this immediately to the heat, cook for another five minutes, and that should be it. Should be done. Okay, so now uh, about five minutes have passed, and our katsaplana should be totally cooked, hot all the way through. And open it up. And usually I would open it up at the table um, so everybody can see it whole before you break it down and. Uh, serve it to each person. You want to just make sure that your little necks are all the way open, all the way around, which they are. Those are the hardest to open. Um, and you can see our shrimp are nice and pink. Okay. The best part about a katsaplana, I think, um, is that after you've served your guests, you can just leave the katsaplana on the table and they can take their uh, empty shells and discard them right into the empty halves of the bowls. So it's a really easy cleanup on top of it and you just need one pot to cook everything in and then one pot handles all the mess. It's convenient. Okay, and to plate it, I just get a nice chunk of hearty bread, a nice fresh parsley sprig, try and get a little bit of everything and the juice for everyone. And then with a pair of tongs, I kind of just grab one of the pieces of fish. And I place it right on top and I'll usually grab like another shrimp, place it in the bowl and a little hit of fresh parsley on top. And there you have it, katsaplana, Portuguese fish stew, mixed seafood stew. Um, it goes great in the summer or in the winter, and it pairs really well with red or white wine. It's spicy and full-bodied, and uh, it's great any time of year. Enjoy.